What are the interventions that are available? There is no one specific treatment for all urinary stones. Various treatments are available. First is extracorporeal shockwave lithotripsy, otherwise called ESWL. Second is ureterorhinoscopy through natural orifice with either a rigid or flexible equipment called ureterorhinoscope. A third procedure is percutaneous nephrolithotomy, a keyhole operation called PCNL. Very rarely, laparoscopy, robotic or even the old-fashioned open surgery can be performed. Residual stones after all these above procedures is a real possibility and may need second procedure in a few patients. Again, I want to impress upon you at this stage that there is no one specific treatment for all urinary stones and your specialist will decide what is the ideal treatment for your stone. ESWL, otherwise called as extracorporeal shockwave lithotripsy, is one of the greatest inventions of the 20th century. A common man calls it as laser treatment, but actually it is not laser, but shock waves from an energy source focused onto a kidney stone, which will fragment it into powder, and the fragments are passed in the urine. But not all stones can be broken with this equipment, and it has got its own limitations. The size of the stone, location, and composition of the stone determines the success of shockwave treatment. CT scan is an ideal investigation of choice, which will measure the hardness of the stone and guide the physician to make a decision. Procedure ESWL, extracorporeal shockwave lithotripsy, is performed as a day care procedure under IV sedation, can resume to normal work from the very next day. Ureterorhinoscope is an endoscope and the procedure done with this is called ureterorhinoscopy. This could be semi-rigid or flexible. This instrument enables us to visualize the entire upper urinary tract. Stones in the straight portion of the tube called ureter can be tackled by semi-rigid ureteroscope. However, with the flexible equipment it is possible to visualize the entire upper urinary tract and to treat the stones in the ureter and inside the kidneys as well. Now we'll show you a small animation and video clippings related to these procedures done by me and by my colleague Dr. Vishwaru. This is an IVP sequence. The patient has a large right renal pelvic stone. Left side, patient has one centimeter obstructing and symptomatic upper uteric stone with lower calcial stone. I am going to show how I clear the left ureteric stone by using semi-rigid ureteroscopy. This is the endoscopic telescope called ureteroscope, which I am going to introduce into the urinary tube called ureter up to the point of obstructing stone. I introduce the scope through the natural orifice. You can see Simultaneously, the scope being passed through the ureter with the end of view as well as X-ray view and animation of the procedure. We go up to the stone. After visualizing the stone, I use laser fiber to break the stone. This is the laser fiber which is very thin and can be passed through the endoscope up to the stone to break it into fine dust. Now you can see the laser generating machine with adjustable setting. By adjusting the setting, we can break any hard stone with this machine. Stone is being fragmented with laser into fine particles. Once we complete the fragmentation, the scope is withdrawn gradually, which is seen in the animation. This is a soft plastic tube called DJ stent, which is bent on both sides. I am going to pass this stent into the kidney over a guide wire. You can see it on X-ray being coiled up in the kidney so that it does not come down and being coiled up lower down in the bladder so that it does not go up. This is done to facilitate passage of the fine stone dust in the matter of 2-3 to three weeks after which it is removed. 
IVP X-ray of this patient shows a stone in the middle calyx of the left kidney which cannot be removed by the semi-rigid scope because of its position inside the kidney. Now I am going to remove this stone using flexible ureteroscope. This is a flexible ureteroscope and you can see the instrument is flexible and this scope can be manipulated inside the kidney by use of the hand lever as shown in my right hand. This lever can be moved with the thumb and tip of the scope can be bent downwards in either direction and also by turning the scope to the right or the left. The tip can be made to look forwards or backwards so that every part of the interior of the kidney can be visualized. Now in the insert you can see the laser fiber at the tip of the scope and the scope is being manipulated in either direction. Now I am going to do this procedure by passing the scope through the bladder and into the ureteric opening and up to the kidney to break the kidney stones into small fragments. I am passing the flexible ureteroscope through the ureteric opening which you are seeing now right up to the kidney. You are seeing simultaneously passage of the flexible scope both endoscopically and also on the x-ray as well as the animation. Now the scope has entered the kidney and each and every aspect of the interior of the kidney is visualized. First in the upper portion of the kidney and now being moved into the mid portion of the kidney where you are visualizing the stone also and then the scope is again passed into the lower portion of the kidney so that the entire kidney can be visualized. Now the stone in the middle calyx is again visualized and now fragmented using laser. Fragmentation is continued till the fragments are only about 1 to 2 millimeters in size, about the size of the tip of the laser fiber. These fragments are so small, they will be passed out spontaneously after such fragmentation. Now the scope is being withdrawn out. And I am passing a stent. This is done to facilitate the passage of fine stone dusts in a matter of two to three weeks after which it is removed. Procedure Ureutero Renoscopy Both URS, semi-rigid and flexible, require two days of hospitalization, can resume to normal work three days after the discharge from hospital. The next procedure is what is called percutaneous nephrolithotomy, otherwise called PCNL. When there is a large stone inside the kidney, it has to be necessarily removed by keyhole surgery called PCNL. It may be necessary to make more than one hole to remove the stone, depending on the size of the stone and the configuration of the kidney. The success rate of complete clearance of stones by this method will be around 95%. Bleeding is a known rare complication of this procedure, but it can be adequately and safely treated by blood transfusions and rarely by a method called angioembolization by an interventional radiologist. This is a large stone in the left kidney. This is otherwise called as a stagon stone. It's occupying the entire kidney as you can see it on this IVP x-ray. This stone 
cannot be managed with the previous said methods which go through the natural orifice so this patient will require a different procedure called as a PCNL and I am going to demonstrate this procedure now. After anesthesia, the patient is positioned prone so that the kidney can be approached from the back. Entire procedure is done under X-ray control. The required portion of the kidney is punctured with a needle and a guide wire is passed through the needle and the tract is formed by a keyhole incision using metal and plastic dilators. Ultimately, the hollow tube called amplax sheet is left in position. Now I am passing an endoscope called nephroscope inside the kidney through this sheet to see the kidney stones. Through the telescope I am passing a stone breaking device called lithoplast and break the large stones into small fragments. Now I am removing the stone fragments by using a forceps. A suction device is used at the end to remove all minute stone fragments and also any blood clot within the system. Having removed all the stone fragments now, tubes called a nephrostomy tube to drain the kidney is left behind for 24 hours before removing the confirm complete clearance of the stones with an x-ray the next day. You can see the large amount of stone fragments in this case which cannot be removed by other techniques. Procedure PCNL Percutaneous nephrolithotomy require 4 to 5 days of hospitalization can resume to normal work after 2 to 3 weeks depending on complexity of the case. So far we have discussed the standard percutaneous nephrolithotomy for removal of kidney stones as popularized since early 1980s. Today, with the advent of miniaturization, much smaller equipments in the form of mini, ultra mini and micro equipments are available to do the same procedure with reduced morbidity. However, what equipment to use will be decided by the surgeon, depending on various factors and also with his expertise with the particular equipment with the ultimate aim being achieving best results with minimal morbidity. After all the above mentioned procedures, there is a small chance of fever due to release of hidden bacteria inside the stone during fragmentation. This may need to be treated with higher antibiotics.